We adopted Charlotte shortly after we got married. We always knew that we wanted to be parents, and we were finally in a position financially to allow that to happen. We had so many plans and dreams for the person that she might become. Plans for um, what we'd teach her. You know, an architecture for her entire life. Blueprints. Stolen away from us less than a week after her first birthday. When she died, I think I watched part of you die also. Well, that might have been what I was seeing because that's how I've been feeling too since it happened. For a very short time, we were fathers. Who are we now? We'd wanted to be parents for so long and we both worked so hard to make that a reality and in a moment, fate snatched that away from us. It's been two weeks and we've both been absorbing the grief in different ways. Me crying in quiet rooms alone, going through photos on my phone, trying to make sense of the senseless and you lost somewhere else. Spending countless hours in silence, never leaving the chair near her crib, endlessly staring at empty yellow walls. I think you blame yourself. I'm sure you must because... Well, that's, that's how I feel, too. I blame myself. And what kind of parent lets this happen? Why, why weren't we watching? How did she get the window open? Did I leave it open? Did you? How long had her little body lay in the rose bed, a story below? How, how long had she lay wilted and broken before we found her outside crumpled before the bay window? It, it was an accident, of course. There was never a reason to assign the blame because we, we had each taken it. Quietly assigning it to ourselves in its entirety. We'd been floating like ghosts the past 13 days, avoiding each other. Quiet specters haunting different rooms. And I couldn't bring myself to go back into the room where you were. You couldn't seem to bring yourself to leave it. I didn't know how long we would be like this. Would we always be like this? I was asleep when you came back to life. You shook me awake with a happy gleam shining in your eyes like a light, like a, like a ray of hope. Wake up, he said. It was a whisper, but it sounded so loud and beer log hiss in the dark as your hands shook me roughly. The words you said were laced with slurs. Wake up, you said. Charlotte's back. I figured out what to do. Well, honey, I said, you're drunk. A mental image of our little girl's broken arms and legs amongst all those roses and thorn came to me unbidden. I began to cry and you leaned in to hug me. Yeah, you said. I am, but she's back. I brought her back. It was nonsense. I believed you were just dealing with your grief in your own way and that's, that's why I tried to brush what you were saying off and asked you just to come to bed. When you turned the baby monitor on to show me what you meant, I was still looming in that space between dreaming and awake, and then... Then I heard the gurgle... and soft giggles... of our daughter. I found myself yanked back from that soft, yawning space by the harsh hands of shock. Thinking this had to be some auditory hallucination, some murky wish of my subconscious, an impossibility taunting me from between cracks and reality. My breath caught and my heart jumped into my throat at the sound. I, I felt an amalgamation of joy and terror, feelings I hadn't known could possibly occupy the same moment. What is that? I asked you. Your dark eyes grew crazed like a fire was burning just behind them. You smiled, saying, I told you, it's Charlotte, she's back. In the haze, I rose from the bed and allowed you to lead me down the hall. When you slowly opened the door to her room, I doubled over. I, If I hadn't grasped the railing at the time, I probably would have toppled down to the floor below. The smell was awful. Charlotte cooed softly and giggled as you reached the side of her crib and lifted her out. 
How is this possible? I said, coughing and nearly gagging. I saw a shooting star and I made a wish, he said. That's what I knew what to do. I went to the cemetery and I brought her back. I wanted to puke. I, w I wanted to scream. Charlotte's broken limbs were swinging wildly like a janky marionette controlled by an inexperienced puppeteer. Her flailing arms and legs swung in jerky and unnatural limb circles as she looked up at you in wonder. Her face was purple with bruises and rot. Her large eyes were a milky gray. You, you held her to your face and I could have sworn a black tongue long and pitted with holes snaked out of her mouth to lick your cheek like a like a dog might you should hold her he told me your arms stretched towards me presenting her but at the smell of her and the sight of the dirt falling from her and clods that broke as they hit the floor i wasn't sure how to respond finally something came to me She's probably hungry. I'll I'll go make her a bottle. Then I'll hold her. I went downstairs and quietly slipped out through the kitchen door while the formula heated in the microwave. I got in the car and... And I left. The whole thing is wrong. It isn't natural. I don't know how you've done this. I'm sure it has very little to do with wishes made on falling stars. Whatever dark things that you did, whatever whatever deal that you've made, you shouldn't have. That thing you held out to me, it was it was not our little girl. You can think I'm a bad partner, and that's fine. I can't I can't do that. I I can't I can't raise that. I won't. Judge me for it if you want. I wish that you had stopped texting me. Every time the phone chimes with another one of your notifications, my skin itches, crawls like something awful squirms beneath. I don't know where I'm going. But I'm not coming back there. That thing is not our daughter. I've never been more terrified of a child. I've never been more terrified... Of you. Or whatever it is you've done. Not in my entire life. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. I really appreciate it, and anytime you guys give me a subscribe or a follow or a like or a comment or literally just a watch, I can't thank you enough for it because you're the reason I keep making episodes and you guys are the reason that I love horror as much as I do. We're in the middle of summer, and I'm from Texas, which means that it's a great time for iced tea. And you know who makes iced tea? My wife. My wife sells tea. My wife sells tea on Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. If you want to get the Mr. Creepy Pasta special, you can order a dark and stormy night and specifically request a dabbing sticker that you only get if you ask for it. And as always, I want to give a very special thanks to all of my patrons at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepy Pasta because you guys are the reasons I get to keep my lights on in the house and get wonderful little treats for my cats and everything like that. And also the reason why we keep getting special custom series just for the channel. So a special thanks to Jacob Schaefer, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Arst, Ken Lando Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Bardo Hawk 764, Banana Mafia 1, Melancholy Corpse, Hollow Zero, Ferb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Katie Birch, Sashi Sasaku, Caden the Spooky Boy, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Faye Lockett, Miss Alexandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Ozreen Fox, Robert White, Andres Garcia, Snails Brennan, Legit Quad Feed, James Bruce, Chris Lovins, Freddy Krueger, Tynam, Justin Johnson, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Someone You Love, Kira the Sloth, Tommy Green, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kaya, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Corey Kenshin, and Peaceful Buddha. That's right, guys, at patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta, you can join this amazing list of people's names I mispronounce and the list of Patreons down there in the description. But of course, none of that is ever required. I just appreciate you guys subscribing and watching and honestly being here. So, to all of you, sweet dreams. <laughs>